All right, you already saw game one of match one at the 20-sided store monthly Netrunner tournament that took place on February 9th, I believe. Yes. <laughs> um, here is game two of match one. Aren't you excited? Oh, yeah. There's me on the left with my MBNs. There's Chris on the right with his deadly vamp kit. Oh, it's so deadly. If you don't know what's coming, this thing will just destroy you. It puts you in so many catch-22 situations. I got uh, three more games from this tournament. Even though there were two more matches, uh, the fourth game and final, the second game of the third match, the final game of the tournament, for the recording stopped for some reason, so I don't have the whole game recorded, so I'm not even going to bother uploading it. Uh, I'll just tell you what happened there um, in the video for game one of match three. Um, what else? <laughs> the store championships uh, in New York are coming up really soon. Uh, February... The 15th is the Complete Strategist Store Championship, and I believe that, is it going to be March 2nd, I think, might be the 20-sided store, store championship. There's also a, going to be a store championship at the Uncommons, which is our relatively new board game cafe uh, in Manhattan. So lots of Netrunner going on here, and those are just the tournaments. Uh, if you want to know all about the Netrunner that happens in New York City, you should go to meetup.com. Our old meetup was Netrunner NYC. If you find that meetup, which is the old one we're not using anymore, there should be a link to the new one, which is NYC Cards, which is also used by uh, the Thrones and Star Wars LCG players in the city. So all your LCG New York City needs in one, in, uh, one meetup. Okay, here we go. Install, install. Soup Sweet. Why couldn't he be playing Andromeda? Okay. Oh, well, he's going to get his Magnum Opus because that's what his deck is all about, and that's what he's going to do with his uh, first turn. Just get his Magnum Opus and take some monies. How can you vamp if you don't have a pile of money? All right, so right away I'm making a big mistake here. Uh, because the first game took so long, and also because I'm a dummy, um... I'm sort of rushing a little bit and not thinking carefully. So uh, my ice placement here was awful, considering the fact that he's Kit, right? When you're playing against Kit, your ice placement has to be very different from playing any other runner, right? I mean, some of the runners, you have to be a little different. For example, on Gabe or, or in a criminal, you're going to want to put more on HQ than on R&D. Um, you know, in a Shaper Anarch, maybe a little more in R&D than HQ, though most of those guys are uh, still running HQ punishment these days. Here he goes. Pop-up window. See, I should have saved that pop-up window and put it in front of a non-code gate. And he's trashing my sand sand because he's got magnum money. Yep. Okay, is that remote pretty useless? But I made a credit, and I got a lot of money. Yes, that's a, I think it's a Viper on HQ, which is bad news. <laughs> um, all right, let's, I think R&D, though, is secure, which is which is nice, I guess. Uh, I think I did it right on HQ and, and on R&D um, and did bad ice on the other servers. If you have a code gate against Kit, what you want to do is just hold on to that code gate, especially pop-up window. That's the best one of all. And then wait until you get some other non-code gate. Right, a century or barrier, or or even something, you know, a trap, right? And put that down first, and then um, put your pop-up window in front of that, and that's how you stop Kit. Um, so yeah, I got a Viper, and I rezzed it. Why did I res it? Well, because even though it's a code gate, even though he's gonna walk right in, uh, it's still gonna cost him one, two, three, four, three if he doesn't care about losing a click. So it's it's still a nice tax for him to get into HQ. He's not just going to run it like crazy, because um, it does cost him some money. Uh, yeah.
See, and it's almost, it, it's like now that I've resed it, it's almost like now I got to pay more to install in front of it because I don't want to throw it out because I already paid to res it. And it does cost him money to get through it. It's not free, but it's not stopping him either. And I need to stop him on HQ because I know he's playing vamp, which is why you see I'm holding those beanstalks and not using them. Why? Because I am I know it's vamp, so I'm holding them for vamp recovery, right? Okay, so there I put a caduceus out in front of the pop-up window, and now I got to put something else in front of the caduceus to get any kind of actual stopping power. There we go. So I think that's a Viper I put in front of the Caduceus. So started off with a bad pop-up window remote. I thought that might have scared him away, um, but not. All right, so now that I feel safe with that remote, I go like this. Now see, here is the devastation that Vamp uh, can reach, <laughs> can bring upon you, right? Is basically, he will not run. And notice he hasn't run R&D yet, or the remote. He won't run one of those servers very unlikely to run those servers um, unless you force him to or unless you have no money because if you run a server it doesn't matter how many ice there are if they're not rezzed and the corp has no money they're not going to become rezzed okay so how many how many credits did I just have there um, he's now running the remote okay no res no res pop up window and a sand sand okay so I could have res that sand sand right with some of i think i might have had enough there possibly to res the sand sand off the vamp right but if i do that he's still gonna vamp me for the re you know for the remaining money he's still gonna run the remote i still won't be able to res the ice the sand sand will be resed he'll pay five to trash it he paid six to vamp me um yeah, he paid six to vamp me, so at least, right? If if I had the six for the for the sand sand, right? Then he's paying, and I res the sand sand. I'm basically giving him a one credit discount, assuming he's gonna trash the sand sand, right? So by not resing it, I made him lose one credit more than normal. All this. Notice how he keeps uh, next to that tag he's got from his vamp, right? Um, he's got a five credit token. Right? Uh, why can't I draw a closed accounts? I don't know. That five credit token he's keeping there for trashing sand sands. <laughs> he wants to always have enough to trash run. See, he's not going to run the remote. Oh, there it goes. R&D. See, because he sees that I have eight credits. Right? Two, four, six, eight. He wants to make me spend money to go below eight. Because if I have eight, that means I can go sand sand after script. And you see I have one in my hand. So he's trying to get me below 8, which is why I'm not going to res any of the ice in R&D. Right? But I am going to dilute R&D uh, with a sand sand and two hedge funds. I'm thinking about getting back a beanstalk because that will help me better if I get vamped, but hedge fund is just more money. Um, yeah. See, so I'm hoping here that an R&D, that he'll get nothing. Uh, and I'll be able to keep $8. If I can keep $8 to the end of his turn, I'm going to score. And he's... Oh, damn it. Oh, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. Should I have rezzed? He's running R&D again. Uh, I'm not going to res again. What are the odds? The odds are not in my favor. <laughs> Four points. <laughs> And now he's going to run the remote. So he, see, he's got enough to trash the sand sand and get through the pop-up window. So it's like, well, even if I keep the eight credits, I'm not going to have the sand sand anymore. So I may as well res, um, you know, these ice on the remote to try to keep the sand sand there. Because remember, he's already trashed one, and I just shuffled it back in. That one on the table is the only one I got. I'm going to need it. Um, yeah. So, I guess I could res these ice. Am I going to res them? Yeah, I'll res. So he breaks his, the viper. I'll res my caduceus. I'm going to trace for the money. Trace five for money. Get my recurring NBN credits. 
See, at this point, I don't want to end the run. I want money. He let me have the money, and... No, he's going to end the run on the Caduceus, not let me get my pop-up window money. Um, okay, but I still don't have enough to score off that Sand Sand right now. Hmm. Do I have a closed accounts? Oh, man, maybe I should have played it. Then. Oh, do I have one? I don't even know if I have one. He's still tagged from that vamp. Is he? Do I have one? I can't tell if I have one or not. <laughs> Alright, so I'm taking money to get up to eight. Throwing something out. All right, this time I'm going to res the ice wall. That at least, see, even though that doesn't stop him because it becomes a code gate, it makes it so we can only get in once per turn because the kit ability is only once per turn, not every single run. All right, so I don't see a closed accounts in my hand. I hope I didn't just throw one out. <laughs> was I not paying attention to the fact that he was still tagged from that vamp? I don't know. Maybe I just didn't have one. Or maybe I'm dumb. This is what happens when you get rushed, right? I tend to like to play games, j games in general. I play fast, right? Because I get upset when other people play slow. And I think during other people's turns, because, you know, I'm trying to follow the golden rule, right? I don't like it when other people play slow, so I'm not going to play slow. Um, but when I play fast, I, <clears throat> I can make mistakes. Like, you know, when I put these ice in a really dumb configuration against Kit and... Um, Possibly if I just threw out a closed accounts that when he was still tagged. Because <laughs> um, I could have closed accounts installed, um, and that would have been awesome. Scored an extra script right away. Okay, so now R&D is nice and safe. But I only have seven credits, not eight. I need eight. Erg. I need eight credits. But I wanted to keep you out of R and D. Okay, taking money, throwing cards out. All right, now I've got eight, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine. I got ten. And all my ice is res, so there's no way I can spend any more money. So what's going to happen? You know it. You know it. Rearranging my ice in the proper direction. Install, same old thing. Vamp. There goes all my money. No, I think he vamped enough to leave me with three dollars. Yep. Hmm. Actually, yeah. In that situation, no. If I, I could have rezzed the sand sand there, yeah, I could have. That was that was actually a mistake right there, right? See, in that situation, I should have rezzed that sand sand because he would not have had enough to go in and trash it. Um. No, oh, that's my breaking news. That's that's a shame. Um, okay, here we go. Finally got my sand sand situation. Astro script. Yes. And he's just going to run HQ straight up. And there we go. <laughs> oh, I guess it wouldn't have really mattered. Um, you know, a turn faster, a turn slower. Yeah. If I did indeed draw closed accounts earlier, I could have used it. Uh, maybe to win, get it to get an Astro out a few turns earlier. Uh, maybe I could have res the ice and R&D. Really, it was just bad ice placement at the beginning. Uh, I could have held off on that remote. Uh, I could have made pop-up window ice wall on 
R and D. I could have. There's a lot of mistakes I made there. Um, you know, I don't think I had a really bad draw at all. I mean, I draw all the Astro scripts and sand sands and money, right? So that's that's what you need. Um, that vamp, it, it just stops you, right? If you, you know, he knows that if you've got eight credits, that you can make it happen. So if you're at eight, he's gonna vamp unless you can stop it. Um, I guess the one thing I didn't draw was, you know, of all the ice I drew, I drew a Caduceus late. That wasn't a code gate. And I drew the ice wall early, which was not a code gate. Knowing he played vamp, I probably should have done ice wall pop-up window on HQ uh, and put the Viper on R&D, because he's going to take free runs on R&D if he can, right? Because um, I don't necessarily have to keep him out of R&D. I just have to slow him down so he can't run there like crazy. And uh, I could have actually stopped him on HQ with the ice wall uh, pop-up window. And then in the, re the remote, I could have built later. I don't know. Oh, well. Uh, we split those two rounds. It was some good Netrunner. Uh, I'm going to go work on the video for round two.